fullness of joy and in his right hand is pleasure forevermore. We have experienced the fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord this evening and we are about to receive the fullness of his right hand. And you already started. God already assured us what he planned to do today and he will do it. It's not by power, it's not by might, it's by the Spirit of the Lord. The zeal of the house of the Lord will bring it to pass. Because his church must be built up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have been doing a series of teaching on how to hear, how to obey and follow God. And we did series and series and series of teaching. For those that missed it, please, all our teaching is on YouTube. Just type church at Allen, all the teaching will come up. And um, after we finished the teaching, we decided to do some practical um, time. And that's what we're on right now. This is the second session of um, a practical part of how to hear, how to follow and obey God. Because like I always say, sometimes we get caught up in doing rituals religiously, you know. I must be in church and then we come and go back. And I say, if we do that here, then let's shut the door. Because there are several other places where you can just go and go back home and go and go back home. But God set this church here for a purpose so that his body will be built up. And that's our focus. And by all means, it must be done. Because if God proposed to do it, we just need to join force with him to do it. Because the Bible says every house is built by a man. But God is the builder of all things. So God building all things require for us to join force with him to make sure that his house is built up. And what house are we talking about? You and me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we are building up ourselves. And um, we know that the most important thing to us is the word of God. We have preached that here over and over again. And God keeps bringing us back to it over and over again. And we want to see how, how do we incorporate the word of God into our life. And that's what we're working on right now because it's more than hearing. In fact, it's more than coming to Jesus. It's more than hearing. Because the Bible says it is only the doer of the word that is blessed in all these ways. But we can't do the word until the word is incorporated into us and we into the word. We are sandwiched into the word. The word is that sandwich into us. Praise the Lord. And we know we studied that on Sunday when we look at Luke chapter 6 concerning the parable that Jesus gave about two people that built their house. Both of them came to Jesus. Both of them had the saying of Jesus. But one of them incorporated the word and did the word. So when challenging moments came, that one stood. Praise the Lord. And I'm so happy about the prophecy that came out today. Because God said, we need what we're doing right now. We need what we're doing right now. Because this is perilous time. <laughs> you know, in those days, they used to tell us, perilous time we come. is here. is here. And like I always tell pastor, in those days when we were in UI, you know, the drama team, we put some schemes together, you know, <laughs> and act it. And when they finish acting, in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, these people are exaggerating. This can't be happening. But guess what? I see. All those things they acted in those days, I see it happening in the church. <laughs> so, perilous time is here. And the only thing that will make us stand is the word of God. Because let me tell you something. Nobody should sit here and say, I know I will stand. It's not by determination. Is by the word. Because if it was by determination, Peter would not deny Jesus Christ. Because he was so sure. He said, you know, Lord, 
Let everybody leave you. I won't. Jesus looked at him and said, Look, not only will you deny me one time, <laughs> you will do it more than one time. Within a short period of time. And it happened like that. We need the word. Tell your neighbor you need the word. You need the word. Because it's only the word that can sustain us in times like that. Praise the Lord. Let's see Second Peter chapter 1. It's going to be interactive today, but I just want to do some introduction before we start that. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 1. Simon Peter is servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Grace and peace can only multiply through the knowledge of God. And of course, we know what the knowledge of God is, is the word. Hallelujah. Because we've said that here over and over and over again. What makes God God is the word of God. That is the glory of God. That is the kabod of God. God exists by his word. And that's why the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So if we need grace to be multiplied, it must come through the word. It's not going to come by somebody laying hand on you. It's not going to come by somebody pouring anointing on you. It's not going to come by holy water. It's not going to come by handkerchiefs that are blessed. Because that's what is going on in the body right now. Everybody think you just run after one bishop and they pour oil. It's more than that. Is by the, the grace comes by the word. In fact, grace does not come by you pouring water on the hand of somebody else. Because that's another preaching that's going on. Find an Elijah and pour water for 10 years, or maybe by 20 years, his grace would have fallen upon you. It's by the word. I'm not saying don't do that if it is the plan of God. Praise the Lord. Because we know. That Elijah and Elisha case is a very peculiar case. Very peculiar. It's not common. In fact, that's the only one we record. Or maybe Moses or maybe like that also. But the reason why it's like that is because Elijah did not fulfill what God sent him to do. And somebody else must fulfill it. And that's why Elisha came in. It was not in the plan of God. To bring Elisha. It was when Elijah refused to continue after he was being challenged. Then Elisha came in. Praise the Lord. And we know also Moses was supposed to take the children of Israel to the promised land. But because of what happened in the way, he could not finish the calling and he had to hand it over to Joshua. Praise the Lord. And like I always tell people, I say, okay, if, if that's the precedent, who did Elijah pour water on, on, on the person's hand? Who? Nobody. Elijah appeared. Elijah of Tishbet. Praise the Lord. But what I just want to stress here is that grace comes by the word. Grace comes and it does not matter whether you have title behind your name or you don't have title behind your name. If you walk the word of God into your life, grace will come upon your life. And that is what God wants to do with us today. Because in this perilous time that we are in, we need abundant grace. Tell your neighbor you need grace. <laughs> and we will obtain abundant grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are in the right place. Hallelujah. Verse 3. It says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to virtue, to glory and virtue. God has given us all things that 
attain to life and godliness. But the point is, it's not automatic. And that's why we've been stressing here since the inception of this church. It is not automatic. Because a lot of people think it's automatic. Oh, I'm born again. Because I'm born again, all of the promises that is in the word of God will start to manifest in my life. Anyway, it won't take us long to know that it doesn't happen like that. But the sad thing is that when some people don't see it happen like that, they get discouraged. Oh, maybe the word is not true. No. The word is true. We need to walk it. Praise the Lord. Amen. We need to walk the word of God in our life. The Bible says that it comes through the knowledge of him. Through the knowledge of him. And that's the word. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. Everything that is written in the Bible is true and it happens even now in our generation. If we do what we need to do that the Bible says we should do, we will get the result that the Bible says we should get. And that's what we are working on. We are working on that. We are working on that. Look at verse 4. Look at verse 4. It says, whereby if I want you to underline this in your Bible, whereby we are given, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Brethren, we have some fantastic promises. The Bible called it exceeding great and precious. Exceeding great and precious. And it is these promises that makes us to partake of the divine nature. That is, to be like God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And that's what we are about right now. We want to incorporate the word into our life. We want to see these precious and great promises. We want to apply it the way the Bible says we should apply it so that we can become who God says we are. Praise the Lord. Because becoming who God says we are does not fall upon us. But he comes to us when we do what we need to do or when we do what God says we should do. Praise the Lord. And the um, message translation says, we were also given absolute terrific promises. I'm just reading that same verse 4 in message translation. He, said, he calls it terrific promises, which is our ticket to participate in the life of God. Those promises are tickets that God has given us to participate in the life of God. And thank God we don't have to pay for it. Praise the Lord. We all have the Bible. 66 books. But it does nothing to us when it's on the shelf. It does nothing to us if we put it under our pillow. It does nothing to us when we just open it and lay it down. In fact, it does nothing when we read it alone. Because we need to do more than reading. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says, this book of the law shall not depart out of. Hallelujah. We all know that in this house. Because we do not only read the word, we meditate. And the only way you can meditate on the word of God is when you put it in your mouth. And you say it over and over and over. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, when we do that, then we will be able to do what is written in the word. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, some Christians think all the things that is in the Bible is really too high a standard for anybody to live by. In fact, majority of the Christians think like that. You say, well, the Bible says it, but who can live like that? We can. We can live like that if the word does not depart out of our mouth. That's what it takes. If we don't do that, you might read it, you might hear your pastor say it one time, two times, or three times. You can. You cannot by your willpower do the word of God. But the word himself have life. 
The word of God is not a letter, it's not a book, it's not like a storybook. It's a living and powerful word. And when you put that word in your mouth, you give it power to bring transformation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The word is able to change. The word that was able to translate us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light is able to make us to grow. But we need to work it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. It says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. What knowledge are we talking about? We're not talking about science. We're not talking about philosophy. We're not talking about motivational speaking. <laughs> the knowledge we're talking about is the knowledge of God. And the knowledge of God is the word of God. And when we don't have the word of God in us, we go through a lot of things that God really never planned for us to go through and which we shouldn't really go through, even though we try to explain it out. The thought of God for us is that which is good, not of evil, to give us an expected end. And we do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 1.30 Who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Jesus is made unto us wisdom. He is the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. That's our wisdom. That's our knowledge. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And work have to go into it. And I'm stressing that I keep saying that over and over again because we need to understand that. Because when you go to college, getting an admission to college is not a guarantee that you will leave the place with a degree. We all know that, right? So what makes us think that all you need to do is get born again and sit in church and everything will be okay? And just as we need to put time in college, as we need to study hard, as we need to apply ourselves, so is spiritual things. When it comes to spiritual things, you must apply yourself. You must do it purposely. Praise the Lord. You can't just go to college without a purpose, without a plan. You just sleep all day and do everything you want to do and then you expect to get out with a degree. It never happens. And it's the same thing with the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Grace is not for us to sit down and do nothing. Because that's another preaching that flies around right now. Oh, the grace of God, the grace of God, the grace of God. The grace of God is given to us to enable us and to empower us to do what we need to do. Praise the Lord. So when we have the grace of God, we can only enjoy the grace of God when we do what we need to do. Then we get results. So as we start to do this practical aspect, I want you to understand, because that's one thing you must understand. It's work. It's work. And you must apply yourself to do it to get results. We all wake up in the morning, we go to our jobs. Then you get paid. If you don't go, you don't get paid. Even when you are self-employed. Do you understand? In fact, when you are self-employed, it's worse. And yet, we want to get paid in spiritual things without doing nothing. It doesn't happen like that. And that's the truth 
that we need to understand. Because a lot of people have been deceived. God wants to bring restoration to his house. And the first place where we start is to know what God expects of us. We cannot go, in fact, we can't go with God without his word. Because I, I don't want to say you can't go far with God. You can't go with God without his word. Praise God. Hallelujah. But thank God his word is not restricted also. Everybody have access to it. So we just need to do what we have to do. Praise the Lord. Okay. I'm going to stop here as a way of introduction. And will we continue from where we started last Thursday? We decided to do something practical to help ourselves because, you know, we, we've listened to a lot of teaching on how to hear God. And um, I stress the fact that hearing God, the basic way that God speaks to us is through his word. Through his word. Let's be very basic. God speaks to us through his word. And then we said several other things also. We can check on you too. But at least everybody have access to the basic one, which is the word of God. And then I said, okay, let's practicalize it. So I said, let's start from the book of Hebrews. It's just random. It doesn't mean anything. We just pick the, the book of Hebrews and say, we want to study the book of Hebrews. We want to meditate on the book of Hebrews and let the Holy Spirit speak to us as we read. And some of us started reading it gradually and then I said, okay, let's practicalize it and help ourselves out. Because some people have challenges. Like, okay, when I sit down and I read, how do I know when the Holy Spirit is talking to me? How do I get revelation and stuff like that? So that's what we mean to handle during this practical moment. We want to see how we can sit down, take the word of God, read it, then meditate on it, and then let God speak to us things that will be incorporated into our life and things that will change us. And we did that with Hebrews chapter 1 last Thursday. Today we're going to go to chapter 2. And I want everybody to be free if you have any questions. In fact, if you have questions from all the teachings we've done before, feel free. Even if the question you have is not in the book of Hebrews, you can ask it. And the Lord will help us. Praise God. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 2. And uh, everybody is participating. So somebody can read um, from verse 1 to 3. Therefore, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For it is the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect to great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Praise the Lord. So, any contribution on that? What is the Holy Spirit telling you from that? Careful attention so that it, it will not be drifted away from us. Praise the Lord. Anybody yes. have? We should be drawers and not hearers only. Amen. 
Praise God. I mean, that's 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 a buttress to what I was saying before we even read the book of Hebrews. We must pay attention. We must. There is a, we need to participate. Let me put it that way. Because most of us, we think, oh, I'm born again. That's it. Jesus paid the price. It's more than that. Yes, you are born again. Jesus paid the price. It's the beginning. In fact, the price that Jesus Christ paid is what has given us an access back to the word of God. Because without that price, we cannot understand the word. We can't. And the Bible says the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. The price that Jesus Christ paid is to bring us back into fellowship with God. Because without the price, you cannot even communicate with God. But it's not that price that will make you grow. We must pay the price to grow. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor you must pay the price to grow. And that's what we're talking about right now. The Bible said that pay attention to the word of God. And then the writer of Hebrews is saying that, look, if people that rejected the words of angels did not go without punishment. And that's what I read here. He said, what makes you think that when you reject the word that has been spoken right from the time of Jesus Christ, by God himself, that came in form of flesh. And then the apostles took it over from that time. He said, what makes you think that when you reject that word, you are okay? That's what the Bible is saying. But that's what we hear these days. It's okay, right? It's okay. Just do anything you want to do. Go anywhere you feel like going. Just make sure on Sunday you are back in church. The Bible does not say that. The Bible does not say that. God does not condone it. And that's the truth. And the earlier we understand that, the better. Because the Bible says that we should not be deceived. A lot of people are deceived. <laughs> Bible says, let them that name the name of the Lord do what? Depart from iniquity. Depart from what God, what God says is wrong is wrong. I don't care what you think. I guess in, in verse 3, mm -hmm. I guess just exactly what you were saying, I guess it's emphatic, is it how shall we escape? Thank you. So it's, it's emphatic right there that it's emphatic right there that it's saying, you know, you definitely cannot escape if we neglect the great salvation. Hallelujah. See? Roshan took it a step high. He said, look, the Bible just said you will not escape. And when somebody tells you you cannot escape, what does it mean? <laughs> there is a repercussion. There is a there is a repercussion. There is a punishment that is attached to it. In fact, he's saying that it is expedient. You know, there sometimes they will say something is required, but then when it's expedient, it must be done. I guess, I guess they, you know that statement mm -hmm. actually struck me because well struck me and then also confused me to some extent where when I read it then I started thinking about okay where does grace and mercy come in, come in? you know because you know I'm I'm the believer of well if you you know God is merciful so whatever you do if you say you know if you repent and then you move forward and I'm reading this is this is a a strong statement. It's very emphatic that you know the consequences you know attributed to the things we do then on the other hand i'm thinking about grace, grace and mercy and so I'm, so how do you marry good yeah, have exactly. all have this kind of okay. praise god Hallelujah. that's a good observation and a, and a great question okay. where does grace come in 
the answer comes out also from what we've read in Hebrews. First and foremost, why were we encouraged not to allow the things that we have heard to sleep? They are those things that will open everything up to us for us to be able to um, live how God wants us to live. That's the reason why we are not allowed to, we're, not, we're, we're advised not to allow them sleep. Okay? Remember what Apostle Paul said. He said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. He ended up in that verse by saying, I believe 1 Corinthians 15, that the grace that was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Why? He said, because I labored more abundantly than them all. He said, yet not I, but the grace of God that was bestowed upon me. Last week we mentioned that the grace of God, outside of bringing the mercy of God and forgiveness to us when we err, one thing also it is meant to do is, in fact, not meant to do, it is actually, when you, when you say grace, it is the divine ability of God working within us to do what God wants us to do. All right? How do we now get that divine ability to work? It's by understanding, learning, understand, and understanding the Word of God. The Word of God that we have learned and understood is what will produce a doing. Remember we said last week that the Word of God is different from, it's not the same as just any other word like storybook or history. It has life in itself. It has anointing in it that makes thing, things to happen. If we will learn the word and believe it, that word makes us able to do. That's the difference between the word of God and motivational speaking. We can't live right by determination only, like Pastor has said over and over again. But if we learn the word of God and we mix it with faith, it makes us able to do. Amen. As children of God, we have his life in us. What makes us to grow is that word. The strength to do and to sustain ourselves in the path of righteousness comes from the word of God. And it's only. It cannot be separated. That's the reason why Apostle Paul here, one of the reasons why he emphasized that these things that you have heard, they are the ones that you will make you able to do. The difference between the New Testament and the Old, the Old came and gave instruction. Apostle Paul explained it in his epistles. The reason why that was given is to show man that you cannot help yourself. Then when the New came, the word of God that came to us is beyond just instructions. There is power inside the word to make us do what God expects of us to do. Amen. So if it is not producing that way in us, it means we have not learned it as we ought to. So we should give it more attention and then dig it and find it out. Amen. Amen. Undeserved or merited on unfavor of God, grace, the meaning of grace is undeserved. What we don't deserve, what we don't merit, and what we don't earn, we know we earn it through the death of Jesus Christ. Now, but uh, now they are saying something about uh, punishment for disobedience and uh, something here. In Yoruba, grace means holy offering. Now, you please enlighten us because we are enjoying the grace now. We are not under the law, we are under the grace. Okay. Mom is still asking the same question that Brother Sean. Let me let me say a little bit uh, um, about grace. Grace comes through Jesus Christ. We all know that. Now, when Adam and Eve sinned, men or we were separated from God. And it was impossible for us to come back to God. We can't do it. Okay? So Jesus Christ came and paid the price so that we can be connected back to God. So that is grace. Because there's nothing that we can do in our own power that can connect us back to God. We have, can only go through Jesus Christ because he already paid the price. Okay, now we are connected back to God. Okay? Because, look, if I'm not born again, I can't hear God. Now I'm born again, I can hear God. I can hear his instructions. 
Now, if God instructs me, it is not Jesus Christ that is now going to come and help me to do what I need to do. Do you understand? But I have the ability to do it because I'm now back to God. That's why our will is still involved. We are back to God. Mm -hmm. We finish work of Jesus. Christ. Yes, but now that I'm back to God, if God instructs me to do something, I still have a choice to decide whether I'm going to do it or I will not do it. Do you understand? Okay, now I cannot now say, okay, God said for me to do something. I choose not to do it. And then I will say, I'm under grace. No. Because that's what people want to do. To sin. Mm -hmm. That one is not grace anymore. And that's what the Bible is saying we will be punished for. Because the Bible says that if the word that the angel spoke was so important that those that disobeyed were punished, how much more the instruction that the Lord is giving us? Okay? But a lot of Christians takes grace to me. Well, this is what God says for me to do. This is what I want to do. I will go ahead and do what I want to do. I'm covered by grace. That's, that's what a lot of Christians say. But it's not true. It's a lie. It's the deceit of the devil. That's why the Bible says on that day, a lot of people will come to Jesus and say, I know you. I did miracle in your day. I did this. And Jesus will say what? Depart from me. I don't know you. And then do you know how that sentence ended? You workers of what? Iniquity. What does iniquity mean? Disobedient. Disobedient. Iniquity is the... Look, there are some sin. There are some things that are not sin in itself. But they are disobedient. And you, we learned that before when we were talking about the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God. When God tells you don't do something, even if doing that thing is not a sin, it becomes a sin to you because he said to you, don't do it. That one is not covered by grace. But if we realize our wrongdoing and we come back to God and confess our sin and turn away, he will forgive us. Do you understand what I'm saying right now? Okay. And, and another mistake that a lot of Christians do right now is that a lot of people live in sin and they don't even bother to confess their sin. Because really, in their mind, they're under grace. Okay? So you go ahead, you do anything you want to do. God understands because I'm under grace. He doesn't. The Bible says that if you say you don't have sin, you deceive yourself. Say, but if thou shalt confess, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I mean, if you were here, uh, the last night video that we did, we dealt with that. We should listen to that message over and over again because those are the things that the enemy uses to have open door to attack us. The enemy is going to and fro. He's going to and fro, up and down, looking for whom to devour. Looking. What is he looking for? That's the question. Why does he have to look? Why, why was he not attacking everybody? Have you ever thought of that? Because if the, look, the devil wants to destroy everybody. So if really he could destroy everybody, he didn't have to search. He would just be doing it from one person to the other. But there must be a ground for destruction. And that's why Jesus said, the prince of this world came and found nothing in me. And we need to live, we need to strive to live our life on that level.